Back and calls. Okay. Uh, no news is good news with yeah. the Good. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I heard some folks who were super excited to see them out on the rail trail and biking around town. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah we got a, they got an e bike. Oh, that came. Mm -hmm. Good. Awesome. And uh, they've been patrolling the rail trail, they've been doing bike patrols in town. Um, they were at graduation. We got some good feedback that there was some presence at graduation. Um, yeah, they're doing good work. Good. Yeah, mighty big smiles on their face when they're riding that bike. <laughs> As well, they should. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Yeah. Gosh. Next I up, that, I know that St. Jay's having a lot of problems on the rail trail over that way with really? some campers. Oh. And uh, think that having presence on the rail trail helps. Yeah. Okay. No, the rail trail is busy place. Yeah. Is, is it? I am. Hardwick's a busy place. Yeah. Sitting, sitting out here. And it yeah, is. it really is. It's really a busy place, i got to say. There was, you guys uh, was all right. <laughs> i got to be busy. Now we'll see who's <laughs> right about the maintenance. We'll, well, that. That. we'll give them some time. I'm giving them. I'm very happy. It, it's busy, busy, busy. To, yep. To stop. They got out there. They're hitting it hard. No, yeah. they're, they're on it right mm -hmm. now. So The governor's going to ride from Swan to yep. St. Jay uh, in July. Yep. To a stop here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We need to. Even lunch or something. Walk just a walk. Ten right? minutes. Ten minutes. Oh, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Uh, the number of stops he's made. I don't know how he's going to make it in one You day. can do it. He's, he's, a, he's an avid cyclist. That's so. not a bad ride. No. No, all right. No. So, so, no, it's not that. No, he's not. That's good. So, I'm going to move us to the Heart of Electric report. We have Nat Smith here. I'm sure yeah. I'm not going to have any of space on that deal. Yep. He's got too much water on it. Hang on. Okay. Our electric will be installing the AM electric car charger behind the building in the next week or so. We'll see what happens. Um, not at all sure how much it will be used. Number two, uh, the Harvard Electric Committee has been resisting the state's request that we move towards automatic meters, to place all our meters to the automatic ones that can be read remotely extremely expensive. There's some money offered, but we're thinking, we don't need this, and we'll see what happens. Third, we, after 10 or it's almost 11 years of no rate increases, made a request for a large 13% increase to the Public Utilities Commission in the state, and we were turned down. They granted us, I think, it's 6.5%. So that's going to curtail uh, a lot of activities. Um, they seem to want us to borrow money from the banks rather than fund things ourselves, which drives us nuts. But in any case, we'll have to deal with it. In another year, we would be allowed to have a 2% increase without acceptance, without even going to the Public Utility Commission. We'll see what we're going to do. But 65 rather than 13% hurts. End of report. That's a final decision from them? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any way to appeal the Public Utility Commission. They are without money on utilities. And that, when does that go into effect, the 6.5%? Right away. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. already has, right? Didn't they say that? We, we actually have uh, added, on the assumption that we get some of it, to the last bill or two. Yeah. So now we have to go through the paperwork of returning some of those monies to the uh, users of electricity, and uh, I guess machines will do all of that, hope they do it correctly. So... Now, what's the... I don't know. What's the... What's the incentive to go to automatic? Oh, it's just part of everything wants to be automatic these days. The well, guy's selling well. the automatic meters. <laughs> yeah, maybe. There's, Great analysis of savings the software. and we don't quite believe all of the savings. Uh, believe it or not, the obvious one is the guy that goes around reading all the meters all the time. But even that job is not completely gone. So we're not convinced that there's much savings. There is in, in cities where it's really easy to read the meters, but I, mean, I don't know, I mean, 
So there are also places in the, U, in the U.S. and in the world where um, when you have automatic rear meters, you can, it allows you to do um, rate different rates based on the time of day. Mm. And so that's the big argument. But don't you, that you'd be able to have different rates during the time of, different time of the day. That doesn't really apply to us since we're, uh, what is it, 90% residential and a little bit of this and that. If you have large commercial users, if you have, if you have all kinds of different possibilities, then maybe you can work something out. We're not convinced that we'll be much savings at all for us. Wouldn't you still have to buy the same amount of power okay. to, to cover? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's really no safe with There the is, because you, well, if you can incent people to you do their dishes right. and laundry when the power is is not cheaper the time. You yeah. buy cheaper power. Right. So anyway, that that's complicated. Yes. Were the other? I know there was several other utilities asking for rate increases as well. Yeah. Was was everyone given like half of what they asked for? Or I do you know? I don't know the answer to that. Name. I just for, just for shits and I know that on the other I'm hearing most of the other. Uh, uh, oh, you guys hear me? Sullivan's right here. <laughs> Mike's here. We can hear you. Hi, Mike. Oh, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. I'm joining in because I failed to get uh, Nat some talking points for you, so I'm here to help him out. He's doing a good job. Yeah, he did a good job. <laughs> three points. <laughs> I got three good points, and now you blow my cover bar. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand uh, what little I thought is you, Danny, you were wondering about how the other utilities fared with their rate filings? Yeah, just, just in general, was it a, everybody got half because, or, well, yeah, just interested in that, that's all. Yeah, so the municipal utilities in general that have filed, that have got to the settling point on their cases, um, a vast number of our rate increase dollars is and and was for uh, operating capital increases. So we all as municip municipals try not to incur debt and to operate within our annual budget even with our capital expenses and carry those, you know, for example, if we were having a rough year for the first six months of the year, we would just backpedal a little on a capital project or two to make it through the year and ship that work to the next year. Um, and that is that is not the way the Department of Public Service wants us to do business. They have made a clear shift and a clear push that they want us to go do you know a capital project X or Y or Z and do it all <coughs> right away and incur debt to do that. So uh, whereas, for example, we did the big conversion in, in the Hardwick uh, circuit, the Hardwick substation circuit areas, and we did that over three, almost four years, worked great. Uh, you know, we didn't have to borrow any money, but that's not how the Department of Public Service wants us to do it. They want us to go out and borrow the dollar, uh, spread that dollar out over you know the life of the investment we made, 15 or 20 years which is directly in conflict with the way the municipals have done business for a very long time. Um, so instead of the project costing a dollar, now it's going to cost a dollar plus all the interest over those years. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot to look at. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, you know, that's not a, I don't know how we're going to transition into that because even when the rate increase they gave us, if we had that last November uh, up through today, we would still be $150,000 in the hole. So that increase they gave us is not going to help. Uh, it's going to help, but it's not going to resolve our financial situation. Um, and we can't incur debt, you know, if we can't pay the bills we have now. So if they, they're trying to put us into a catch-22. And my prediction is we're going to have to file another rate increase right away. But uh, I haven't even discussed this with the commissioners yet, so this is all kind of new news. Do you, thank you, Mike. Do you, do you, Mike? Do you feel that this is? I'm having trouble hearing what we're talking. Sorry, this is Eric. Um, do you, do you feel that the 
the commission just didn't understand your rate case or was it not presented clearly or do you have any indication about why they are doing this? Yeah, they have a couple of uh, like key business uh, equations and perspectives that they use. The primary one is called the tier. And tier stands for times interest earned ratio. So the more interest you pay, the more they believe they can justify your rate increase. And since we have essentially no debt, which I've been working on getting us debt free since I joined it, joined HEB 12 years ago, and we would have been debt free in 2024, but we didn't quite make it. Uh, but they want us to have that debt. And if you have a times interest earned ratio that's high, they'll put all that interest right into your rates. And that's what they just did with Washington Electric Co-op. Washington Electric Co-op went in for a 15 or 14 plus percent rate increase and they got 12 percent of it because they have a huge amount of debt and their interest earned ratio is really high. Huh. huh. Yeah. So, Paul? So, sounds like a Yeah, uh, my Paul fix here, I don't know if you can hear me, but I think my understanding of one of the reasons they're doing that is because they want the people paying the rates today to be the ones getting the funding. So if they pay it all 20 years ago, then those people pay for the benefits that ratepayers get over the next 20 years. And whether that makes sense or not is another question, but that's part of what goes into that equation. That's absolutely correct, Paul, and I, mean, I agree with that philosophy, but uh, we aren't spending the money over, you know, uh, right now. We stretch that money out, and our capital budget remains roughly, you know, four to six hundred thousand dollars a year. We aren't running out and spending a whole bunch of operational money. So yes, the philosophy, I totally agree with that. You know, why would I buy, for example, a substation transformer for half a million dollars that's going to last thirty or thirty-five years and spend pay for it right now? I wouldn't. That doesn't make sense. But if I'm doing a hundred and fifty thousand dollar capital project to upgrade two miles of a circuit to eliminate losses, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that's something that I think we should be doing as part of our operational business, not incurring debt for it. So it's it's a it's a major shift in business philosophy that they're they're pushing on us, and and we're just kind of taking the first step uh, with this rate increase and heading in that direction. Um, so that's, hmm. that's it in a nutshell, I guess. Okay. Well, thank you for the explanation. Appreciate it. Good luck, Mike. You've got to earn it now, buddy. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> uh, so the, I, don't, I don't know if Nat talked to you, but our, our biggest driver right now is uh, with costs, overruns, is our purchase power expenses. And those are being driven, and I'm not sure if I or anybody else uh, advised all of you about the Mystic Station, but um, the world, the global market of natural gas has driven uh, the ISO New England position of heavy, extensively heavy dependence on natural gas to the point where we got hammered with a $350,000 unbudgeted, unexpected, unexplained uh, cost increase so that ISO and New England could run their the Mystic Station, which I think is a United Illuminating Station. But it's, at, it's in Boston Harbor and it's basically a gas pipeline where they can pull in a ship full of natural gas and support the gas system, the gas power uh, generating stations down there during the cold weather. So that those costs, normally we, we can buy power, market power, for maybe six cents a kilowatt hour, uh, or $60 a megawatt hour, 50 or $60. And during the months of December, January, and February, and part of March, our costs for a megawatt hour were over $300 because of Mystic Station. So we're in the process with that, so along with all the monthly utilities uh, filing, uh, FERC filing with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to try and get uh, most, if not all, of that money back. Hmm. So that'll probably be a two-year process, but 
we're aware of that. Hmm. So keep installing those heat pumps. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's here for solar power. All right. Yeah. Good yeah. <laughs> work. All right. Good work right there. I like it. <laughs> All right, next, thank you to Ardwick Electric. Um, next up, select board to consider appointment of Amy Rosenthal for the Equity Committee. Uh, we had a letter of interest. I just wanted to mention from the Equity Committee that Amy came to our last meeting and met with everybody and participated. So she's been to the meeting and um, provided a letter. I'm happy to answer any questions if we can. I make the motion to appoint Amy Rosenthal to the Equity Committee. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next, item two, select board to read a statement in support of Juneteenth. So this is I'm not so much an item. There's no action that needs to be taken. Um, I don't think so. But um, we wanted to, the equity committee was talking about um, how Juneteenth is now a federal holiday, which is next Monday, the 19th and how it would be appropriate since now, um, the, for example, the offices are closed um, Monday in recognition of Juneteenth, that we wanted to just read a little bit about why it's a federal holiday. Um, I think last year it had just been announced and it had just become a federal holiday, so we didn't really, I don't think we even had the town offices closed last year that I can remember. Um, and we also wanted to say from the equity committee that we, um, we hired the Peace and Justice Center to come last month, and they provided a training for some town employees, and a part of that training was talking about the history of Juneteenth, um, and then also just about racism and um, all kinds of different things. So um, I was going to, if it's okay with everybody, just read some segments. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> from the proclamation. Okay. Excerpts. Yes, yeah, some excerpts. Um, so this is uh, a proclamation of Juneteenth Day, of observance of Juneteenth Day written by President Joe Biden in 2022. I'm just going to read a little bit about the history and then just a little bit about the day. So um, after the Union Army captured New Orleans in 1862, slave owners in Confederate states migrated to Texas with more than 150,000 enslaved black persons. For three years, even after President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Procl Proclamation, enslaved black Americans in Texas remained in brutal bondage, immorally and illegally deprived of their freedom and basic dignity. On June 19, 1865, over two years after President Lincoln declared all enslaved persons free, Major General Gordon Granger and Union Army troops marched to Galveston, Texas to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation and free the last enslaved black Americans in Texas. Those who were freed from bondage celebrated their long overdue emancipation on June 19th. Today, our nation commemorates Juneteenth, a chance to celebrate human freedom, reflect on the grievous and ongoing legacy of slavery, and rededicate ourselves to rooting out the systemic racism that continues to plague our society as we strive to deliver the full promise of America to every American. I'm just gonna skip one paragraph. Juneteenth is a day to reflect on both bondage and freedom, a day of both pain and purpose. It is in equal measure a remembrance of both the long hard night of slavery and subjugation, as well as a celebration of the promise of a brighter morning to come. On Juneteenth, we remember our extraordinary capacity to heal, to hope, and to emerge from our worst moments as a stronger, freer, and more just nation. It is also a day to celebrate the power and resilience of black Americans who have endured generations of oppression in the ongoing journey toward equal justice, equal dignity, equal rights, and equal opportunity in America. Um, if you're interested in reading the whole proclamation, it can be found on the White House website. <laughs> and but we that, can have it attached to our minutes. And it's attached to the minutes, but I thought that was the most relevant. That's great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you yeah. That's great. Um, uh, and the 19th is when do you say Monday? It's next Monday. Monday. Is it going to be an anniversary holiday or a Monday holiday? It's like continually? It's mm -hmm. a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah, like, we'll find out next year. Washington's birthday right. is not. Right. Yeah. Happened on a Monday this year, so. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but no, that's a that's a really good question. I would think it would be a traveling one. A Monday one. Yeah, because it's not at like the Monday one is like this six big ones or whatever. It's like Memorial you know Day and Labor Day. Memorial Day. Day. This yeah. is like the 19th is a specific day. 
We'll find out. We'll Not find out sure. next year. Yeah, we will. Let's take it. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, Gavin's legal in Vermont yeah. now, so let's take a little fool. Eric, Gavin's legal in Vermont. Let's take a little fool. It is legal. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was only good clean fun. I thought you had to use the Vermont. You were there a long time. No, oh, I've been asleep. Um, all right. Did, no, didn't the governor just pass gaming a uh, gaming law last internet year? Gaming. Oh, internet. Oh, uh, use your phone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Save like, money. Like the sports betting and stuff. I think. Oh yeah. Exactly. This, this is, is like a sport. Um, I just wanted to add really quickly for the June team to um, the equity committee is also working on some community engagement projects for the summer and the fall. Um, and there is a celebration of Juneteenth at the Old Stonehouse Museum in Brownington, if anybody's interested. So um, thank you for having yeah. us read that. Thanks. How did the health equity? Um, Great. So yeah, so the, um, the uh, do you want me to talk about that in, in select board reports? Uh, in select board reports? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Don't forget. Oh, I'm writing it down. All right. Item three is LEMP. We need to, every year, we uh, review and approve our local emergency management plan. I'm a little nervous that two of our three LEMPers are MIA. <laughs> I know where you're lying. Jesus. I don't know if this is a good plan, but this is probably a good plan. Not to worry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so we do this every year, and we have some dedicated town employees who, who uh, fill these really important yes, roles. Yes, by, by May 1st every year, it says right here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> make so, a motion. Do we have to make a motion? Yep. To approve make a the, motion to approve the local emergency management plan for 2023 as documented in our agenda packet. Second. Any discussion or questions about those people and their roles? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Do we need to sign it? The required elements? Yeah. It's just you, Eric. Eric Chair. Just you, and then at the bottom, I think. Just to the top, I think. That's when he gets oh, the best pen. Probably long, yeah. Um, <laughs> next, yeah. next item after the limb, item four. Select board to discuss the logistics of the East Hardwick Fire District using the Town of Hardwick's unique entity identifier, UEI, for the purpose of applying for an assessment management grant, AMP. Um, and this is a sort of a, a technical or logistics thing. I, I just wanted to have a discussion about it and <laughs> make sure everybody's aware of it. It's our first step in uh, getting a big IOU. Um, yeah. So I didn't feel comfortable making the call myself. So um, just to, does somebody want to, somebody, do you want me to recap what I understand about what's happening? And, or do you want to just give a quick overview of like uh, why, so, why they're looking for this? So the fire district was um, required to chlorine. And I don't know, I don't, I haven't been to a, a fire district meeting. Um, so, and then they're just trying to get a better idea of some steps to move forward. Yep. And um, I know that they're doing good work. They've had several large meetings, their annual meeting, um, and they're just looking to make improvements. And, so, and the reason they need this, um, the reason they need the UEI is to, uh, is to, to a, Apply for funding for, for funding yeah. for a study to to help them figure out it's an for asset asset management or something? assessment management <coughs> AMP okay. I don't know what that is oh it's a right assessment management so that's going to be it but the product should give them <coughs> get money to help them assess what they have and where how to move forward right. from so. I have a lot to say on this one. Wow. So can we just back up for yep. briefly? Because people that live in Hardwick, mm -hmm. not in East Hardwick, may have no idea that East Hardwick is not on the same water, water system. system. Well, and a lot so of people aren't on have, any water system. Right. So they have a different thing going on over there um, that they've, yeah. So just to back up to that so yep. people why, understand that. Why don't we start with Wiz? 
Yep. And maybe she can give us some history on the fire district first. Okay. Um, and why it was created. And it was without fires. <laughs> Ladies first, Dan. <laughs> it was created by the select board. A fire district is a municipal entity that is created by the select board. Hardwick Village became a village created by the state. And that, as far as I can tell, is the major difference between a fire district and the village. The village has since remerged with the town. The fire district remains distinct from the town in the boundaries that were established for the fire district in about 1912. I don't remember exactly what the date was. The reason the fire district formed was that they needed in this little village of East Hardwick, they finally came to the point where individual wells wouldn't do it. They needed to create a water system. And so they drew up a petition of, for 20 people, which is what the law requires. They said, this is what we want to do. They took it to the select board. The select board approved it. They created their, they created the Prudential Committee, they did the organizing meeting, and they ran themselves as this little municipal entity um, until now with varying degrees of professional behavior. Um, the fire district has a new board, and they see that the water system needs a lot of improvements, and they're trying to they're actually trying to do a lot of backing and filling of a situation that that has been allowed to go downhill. Potentially deferred maintenance. A lot of deferred maintenance, right. So my question is, why don't they have their own number? Um, is it because this grant that they're going for is time specific, and therefore they have a deadline to meet that they can't meet before they can get a number from the state. Because they really need their own number. They are their own little municipal entity. Mm -hmm. um, and who is, who is this grant coming from? You know, how, what's the deadline? How long is it going to take? And, and why don't they have their own numbers? Those, those are my two real questions. OK, Danny, I see to you. No, that was one of my, we're thinking along the same lines. Anything that, so it sounds like this is an entity of it itself at this point. The it select is. board has never had any discussion right. with them, no power over them, no authority. So if they are to do this water project, then it's going to need to be done either on their own or. They be, have an engineer. Well, that's what I'm saying, but I'm talking about the district. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're going to need a number. They're going to have to get their own funding. They're not going to, right. you know, this won't be the, the first step grant. of this project is get your own. When I, you yeah. know, if I needed to get a grant, the first thing I had to do is get, you know, first thing you had to do is get your EIN. First yeah. thing you had to do is get your CIMP. Mm -hmm. You're done. You did. No, you've got to do that for your own entity, not borrow someone else's. If it was a one-time deal and this was going to fix it and it was, mm -hmm. you know, we were helping them out, but this is the first step of a very, very long, inexpensive, inexpensive. project. Now, if these grants, you know, it takes six months to get this number, and this grant has a six-week deadline, maybe once. Yeah, I'm not sure but, that the grant, well, you know, I'm not sure the grants even want to do that. If I was, have, they should be able to make an arrangement. Yeah, but I'm not, for. you know, I've been yeah. on ranking committees for years, and the first thing I would say is, why don't they have their own number, why they're not right. somebody else's did, um, yeah. did they t Did they talk to you at all about that? Uh, not the time specific. I know they've been in conversation with the state yeah. about the grant. I mean, it, I don't know the timetables, but I can ask. I mean, we're going to have to, I think, right off soon decide where the select board is going to play into this as far as this project. Because I've said for a few years now that they had a dilapidated water system, and you know, I believe that if it's part of Hardwick, then. Harvard should be part of it, just like our system is down here in this village. But 
you know, I don't know. So if I'm they, not the one making that decision. I'm just saying there's big questions here because this is right. They're so, they're valid questions. Yeah. And like I don't know how many houses, how many users, how many miles, how many gallons. Yeah. Many, we don't know nothing about this thing at all. So from my point Other of view, than I do know that it's in really really bad shape. It does seem though that uh, that it, at least with OP, as far as I know, it seems like we're treating the two water systems very similarly right now from like, um, you know, we have the, the water system in the vi village right. that is its own enterprise fund that, that right. the select we control board, that. we do, but we control it separately from all other town right. funds. And we, um, when we use town resources, we bill the water users right. for those town resources. Mm -hmm. But we have our town manager helps, you know, make sure that everything happens that's supposed to happen and, and you know, and if somebody has trouble they can call like right. and but I think this you've is a been board, but, a different entity. But you've been in communication with them about the in similar ways in East Hardwick about these are things we can do and these are things you should think about and so yes. I do think we're supply, supplying similar support. It's just that it's a different system. And it, to one thing that Wiz was saying just barely, I think it would be maybe it's just a question of having more information about their timeline and their system of grants. Because if if the ask was we're in the process of applying for our own, e, own EIN number, there's this one-time opportunity that we need you to be a fiscal agent for, but we plan to have our own number by September, that's a really different ask than just asking us to, and then we'd also would have an agreement about that and what, right. you know, how, because ultimately we are responsible for putting our number on something, so that's something that we have to think about. Even though East Hardwick is a part of Hardwick, as a separate entity, we have to take that into right. consideration. Right. So I don't know if there's a way to have somebody from the fire district come to a next meeting. I don't know what the timeline is like, like if they need this immediately. We don't need another light department. Um, it's, you know, but, another board that, that didn't come out, right? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I, so it sounds like we all have the same questions yeah. and we all have the same concerns. And I think, frankly, it's not in the water, di the, the fire district number one, it's not in their best interest to not have their own number. Right, right, right. Because well, they are, yeah. I mean, I'm, what I'm, my comments are, I think they need to get their own number and start thinking seriously about how we're going to solve this. Well, and it's timely because they have this whole village plan thing process, <laughs> and that can be part of it. Mm -hmm. That's it should that be will, that that should be part of it. It's that a huge will part definitely of it. be part it of it. It would be yeah. great if we could get some information, like how many users, what is in here. Oh no, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? One thing, because people are paying something now, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's who it's does the billing, and they have people. It's at, the fire district. That it's the, the fire district people. Yeah. It's all run. I mean, it's all been named. Right. They run it and do. The I mean, I know the only part I know about it is I used to help Eddie go up and. We're supplying. Help fix the, put the black pipe back together. <laughs> we're we're the water's supplying. The water is delicious in East Hardwick. Right. It's really yeah. good. No, it's great water, but you know what I mean. I know the system. That was the '80s, yeah. so we were facing it. Yeah. That's what I mean. We're so offering we more assistance. Yeah, but do anything to I think Opie's taking all the questions down, and none of these are surprise questions. I think questions. there's some. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be. I don't believe them. I don't know, but my guess is the fire district. It's not going to have the financial capacity with its users in order to support the amount of money that's needed to create a new system. So the fire district itself is it gener doesn't generate enough revenue to fix the problem. So therefore, the town is going to have to help. I don't believe for a minute that the, how many people are on the system in East Hardwick? Thirty. Eighty. 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 I'm pretty sure. How are you going to pay for a $19 million water project? That's why they need to get the grant. Grant. Well, I know that, but Gary, she's got to sustain that water system. You're right. A fire district yeah, has the power to bond. You got to pay. I'm not talking about just 
getting it built. I'm talking about the hey. same problem we're having right now right. down here. I'm almost saying. Well, they're, they're not trying to run a sewage plant, which is a lot more complicated if John Jewett is to be. Oh, you, girls, you never like to hear my doom and gloom, do you? <laughs> no, but, but you guys are always right here. here. But Danny, listen, yeah, I, I hear you. They have, the fire district has the power to do everything that the town does, including yeah. fund the bond. Yeah. And I suspect that they <laughs> are bound by the same limits that a town bond is, which is 12 times the grand list. Yeah. And a fire district uses the same grand list that the assessor. Yeah, I, I understand the that. The question in my mind is not one of can they afford it. We don't know what the grand list is, but 12 times that may actually. The question is can they get the fire district residents to approve it? Well, that, I agree with you there. Yeah, that's kind you of what I'm saying. Those 80 people are. Right. I drove down range. I drove through East Harris the other day. And, thinking about this and looked at the right. looked at, looked at the buildings in East Hardwick and the people who live there and I'm thinking they're not gonna they're vote not for gonna a nineteen day vote for our water water system. Water three times so right right now. I guess well, yeah, but they're expensive right now. But they're also but the district's also in a pickle because they're being required to chlorinate yeah, which yeah. means they have to change their system anyway. So they're kinda like between a they're between a rock and a hard place because if the state's requiring them to chlorinate, which means they have to make improvements to, to their, right. it's this, well, it's this, they I have to, you know, if they're going to do that, then they have to get these systems in. So I think Danny's right. I think it's a bigger conversation of how I, you know, I don't know how the town of Hardwick would support it right now off the top of my head, but I don't know. Well, right now we need to support it by having all be involved in, right. Yeah, and right. doing what we can because it's going to be a, it's going to be a task beyond just the 80 water users. Right, we're going to need the town manager to understand the issues and to help them because it, it, navigate. It, it, their no matter what network. happens, um, my gut feeling is, is the, the select board and the town are going to have to Which, be a partner in it at the very minimum. Mm -hmm. And so and I'm wondering, wondering if they ought not to dissolve the fire district and become an enterprise fund the same as the South Hardwick. But the, but the, it, leaves, it leaves the same thing because this water system has to support itself. Right. Exactly. So and they well, too. So unless it was an for, opportunity for, for a guy users just, to join. Just dealt with being dealing with a board, working for a board. <laughs> There's a lot of more you know, management of our system is much better than the management of the fire district. People changing, boards changing, everybody having a personal meltdown or walking away. All new people. I mean, there's just so many factors to the management of, of something like that. So you're saying Versus it could add stability. It would add major stability to the system and make it much, much, much cheaper to run if you just. But that's really a decision of the fire district. The fire district has. Well, to it would be, but the town, I think, needs to be ready for that discussion, right? Mm -hmm. it, sure. I think so. Does I mean, I don't know. I, I struggle to see any scenario where this little fledgling water district is going to be able to reservoir, all new piping, all new services. No, no. reservoir is fine. Just fine. We don't need all new piping. All right. The reservoir is fairly new. Okay. It's the source there that they need to, to do the work on. So maybe it's Spring. not that Maybe it's only a couple hundred thousand. So, but they need, so anyway, but back to this question of borrowing the town <sighs> identifier number, seems like what I'm hearing is I mean, that we, we would encourage them to definitely apply for their own. If there's some time limit that like they're applying for their own, they're in process, but they need to hit a grant deadline, then they need to come back and tell us that. Okay. Um, I just want to state one thing, is that I made a pledge to make sure that they have water. I told them that I, wouldn't, I would make sure that they have water coming to their tap. And then they, all, they are also residents of the town of Hardwick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can't forget that. No. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we delay this, <laughs> then you think they're... Did I just say that? We, oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> that part, I believe. 
I just want to I just want to make that point that like they are town residents. Right. But I think what I've heard the select board say yeah. is basically that we actually want to commit more to this project than just providing our number. That we actually want to partner in making mm -hmm. this happen, which I think is yeah, more impactful think, yeah, than just, just saying use yeah. our number. Like My maybe point that is means you a special just meeting. Just using our number is just not. It doesn't yeah, make any sense. It's not going to help. Right. Ultimately, it won't help because they need their own in order to be able to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if they're Fun if they're open to some. Support from us. Yeah, I have no issues with them doing it all on their own. I just think it's going to be quite a task. Yeah, me too. And I think it's totally, well, my, my, I, without thinking about it too thoroughly, but just having just what you said, like, yeah, why we wouldn't want residents to have a be out of water because their system failed in our town. When you say 80 people, Oh wait, you mean Houses. 80 properties? I think it's 80 connections. 80 connections. Yeah. Could be wrong though. That's okay. just a number that's stuck in my head. That sounds probably like right. So, so maybe a next step could be if they provide us a timeline, if there is like a we need this grant by yeah, we're August. Doing all the yeah, maybe, we are. maybe just more information for our next meeting. I'm like sorry there wasn't somebody here from the yeah. district. I too. I invited John. It was just a little short notice for him. Yeah, it's yeah. going on. I'll find out. I think they have a meeting. Um, was it second Monday? Second. So we Monday. we made a motion to allow to use it with the. Uh, no. 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 All right. There was no motion made. No. And we're gonna find out. More. We're we're asking for more yep. information. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So carry on. Yeah. Keep helping. Let's try to get that sorted somehow, yeah. some way. Got it. All right, I'm gonna move us to item five, select board to review, review bids for and select a fuel vendor for fiscal year 24, authorize town manager to execute any applicable contracts. We had only two bids despite actually reaching out to five companies, um, but they're good bids and they're um, fixed, which we did not get last, last year, but last two times or was it just this last year? That we didn't Slash. Slash. on the recommendation of the uh, town manager's office. I would make the motion that we purchase our heating oil and propane from Irving and our off road diesel from Dead River. On road diesel, on road diesel. Sorry, Second. on road diesel. Yes, Second. two seconds. <laughs> Excellent, She's quiet. Second, quiet first. And uh, any discussion on that? Those bids. And so um, there is a penalty. Did we have this past year for heating oil? Who did we have? Irving. Irving. So we're staying with them yeah. for heating oil. Okay. Um, I just want to add the propane. Uh, that comes from the new boiler at the wastewater plant. Comes from the, the new The new boiler. The new boiler. Because oh. we have a new boiler down there. So we need to propane. But we also have propane at the town garage now. Okay. As yes. of a few years ago, we had a couple okay. hanging yeah. meter, motor meters on. So, right. Yeah. Um, garage, yeah. aren't we building a new one of those? All right. Yeah. Yes. yes, we are building a new town garage. So that's not this garage. Coming, coming, coming soon. Just writing it down. Um, all right, so motion on the table. Oh, to go with what really are the just the low bids here, uh, Irving for heating oil and propane, Dead River for on-road diesel. Um, any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you to the folks who brought us those bids. Um, next is item six, select board to review bids and select a fire station roof replacement vendor for FY24 and authorize town manager to execute any applicable contracts. Danny's motion for the previous thing also authorized the town manager to. Yes, to sign off contracts. Absolutely. Yes, just to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> I think that just that's what goes on of all. Uh, yeah. All right. So in this case, it looks like we have, I read two, I don't, I'm not there yet, but I read there we have two bids, right? Yep. Or two. Yeah. Um, and did we? Did someone 
do we have substantially different substantially different so do yeah. we have references from either of these yeah. you do okay great um could i see the references for the franklin franklin king roofing just because i've never heard of them now is the time uh, i'd like the price but um they do a lot of high end yeah. roofing stuff. Yeah. 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 I did like that. I was surprised there was only 30 grand difference between stand and seam and asphalt shingles. I know. Yeah. You know, but I know. that's, I mean, it's, it's stand and seam's 35 year yeah. manufacturer warranty. Yeah. It's a lifetime warranty on shingles. You know what that means. Mm -hmm. I noticed Franklin can't be so long. Of, I just said. <laughs> Just the references that I got. Oh. Did, we, we did, did him? somebody call the references? Not yet. Well, we know. I mean, I like his number. It's just. I think that. There's I mean, a lot of however in this. You know, if this yeah. turns out, and if this. Right. Oh, but that's true in the other one, too, if you. Yeah, this, it's not gonna cost, this roof is not going to cost. It's going to cost more than 27 8 so, because of. We don't know what the exactly. plywood needs to be changed out. Rod under there. Yeah. But that's the case in both these bids, so right? right? The, the rod roofing has a line also that uh, any rotten or deteriorating decking will be right. repaired, yeah. replaced on a time and materials basis. Right. Yeah. yeah, so there's no difference there, really. So, so, but there should, so be that much, there should be that much because we did it all that last time. I figure to be safe, another $10,000 yeah. on that low number. I would say that number are, worries me. Are we, yeah, I want so, to, somebody needs to call references, I mm -hmm. think, first. Right. I mean, it, it's a good deal, but it's, that's not much money in today's world. That's a big yeah. roof, but yeah. I'll tell you really what, there's some guys down there in that, where I'm working in Barry, they're doing those houses down there. Them boys put roofs down. House, they do a house in about half a day. Yeah. Roofs. Yes. They have this. They work for Franklin? <laughs> They don't speak a lot of English, but they really put the So, down. just a question on nice the, guys um, girls. the references. Yeah, it's family. Mother and daughter. We get, how do you want to handle this? We don't meet again until the end of July. Oh. And I don't so, want to put these guys off. Right, so do you want to put it in the motion? Put it in the motion that, that we want the town manager to move forward with, who is this? Franklin. Franklin. Yeah. Frank. FK roofing. FK roofing pending uh, Reference. references to the Reference. town manager's satisfaction. Yeah. Yep. So moved. So moved. So moved. And I can Do we need to also? Those. I can communicate the, the references. Sure. Just blast, blast them out to us in email. This is what I have, and just informational. This is what I found, and this yeah. is how I'm moving forward. Right. I hope it's true. I hope it's Do true. Do we need to adjust the amount, like say that we'd accept the? Well, that's his bid. That's, that's the bid. bid. Yeah, that's, that's the bid. bid we're accepting. And extra okay. will be extra. Ex yeah, extra will be extra, right? I'm, I'm going. Really I'm cool. on your page this time, girls. I nothing. That's just going to come out twenty six thousand. I'd like to not like maybe enter into a contract with them not to exceed. So the town manager, no town. So let's. So where are we? We have a motion because Sherry. Made I a, tried to say so moved because so I moved. Out how to and <laughs> and but the so it's the we want to accept the Franklin King FK roofing, roofing FK roofing uh, bid pending town manager's uh, checking references to his satisfaction yeah. and. Town manager to negotiate contracts as in the best interest of the town. How's that? Not to exceed our budget. However, you want to do that. Yeah. Second. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, God, I got it. All in favor? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Yeah, let's hope that they're reputable and that's a good number because that's, that's a good number. We like that. All right. Um, and Amanda, sorry, that was messy one. Is that okay? That's so funny. All right. Can I just ask a really quick question? She just touched us. She lost anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what is our... God, oh, Paul didn't hear that. Oh, hang on. <laughs> just really Kaylee, quickly, question. what is our budget for that project? What's our, uh, what what's our budget for that? What do we have saved? I think it was like 40000 
And that's in a Most capital. 40, We've been saving for that, right? That's just in a capital. Than okay. But that's, and that's for fire, that. Fire station capital. Okay. Fire for the building, yeah. generally. That's, right, that's not just the roof. No. That's, okay. But the roof is the most needed thing right now. Okay. According to our fire chief. <laughs> had some leakage this morning. And oh. the shingles are looking pretty Yeah. Thin yeah. This time. yeah. Okay. 30 year shingles made it 30 years. Yeah. That's incredible, actually. <laughs> it almost never happens. Um, lucky to get 20. Uh, okay. And next, select board to review item seven select board to review. Hardwick LDRT connector loop recommendations from the Planning Commission that were generally accepted on the April 20th meeting. Um, and this is, I, uh, to whoever put this in our packet, thank you very much for the reminder because it's really helpful. And basically, this is something that we need to formally do, formally accept in order to um, continue with the uh, USDA funds that were. Right, so there's an explanation on the back page. Yeah. But it, yeah. Which is, which was great. So appreciate that. But in, in order to pivot to, the, those grant yeah, funds. So do you want to just, should I just say it out loud? Yeah. So the USDA agreed to allow the town to use the remaining funds from a community facilities grant. Um, Which is the match for, for the old. Um, it's for the rail trail, isn't it? Rail trail, right? right because yeah. the state took it over, yeah. and so we had funds in that account, and we, we wanted to use those funds for the bridge, bridge project. Yep. And so they allowed us to use that with the caveat or whatever that we would create um, a link to loop. the LBRT. Which we want to do anyway. That's why we worked out that, did that whole thing with the um, connector loop plan, and that's why we laid all that stuff out. But um, they want to see it in our minutes that we've made a motion to commit to doing that. By the time we get to the library, there'll, there'll be a tunnel. When Danny's done digging, so there'll be a tunnel. So we need to... Um, Dick, get it. I asked what the loop is. We need to we make a motion. The loop and we generally accept I know. it. Oh, that the loop. We the loop. It in April and we accepted it. I just asked what The it loop was. is you come right off the Memorial Park, you come yeah. down sure. Main Street, sure. and you turn right onto. Um, yeah. Park. What is it? That's Highland there. Yeah, and then you go to the Daniels building. You go around to the other side of the bridge. So you park your bike there, you walk across there. the bridge, it's and you enjoy downtown. Instead of riding bike down, into down the Main Street behind the park. We just make that. Oh, and we need that. So I'm telling you, it's gonna, that is a really good, no, I don't say this often, really good idea. <laughs> so, so I because I've been watching the congestion, because they've done a lot of bikes. Well, it's and of course, we got dump trucks in the middle of the road. So that isn't that helping, but. I'm quite impressed with the volume of people that are using that rail track. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I can, I can motion <laughs> that we accept I, the Hardwick LVRT connector loop recommendations from the Planning Commission. Perfect. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's everyone. So and motion those carries. Will be, those will be done when we're done paving. Right. Cool. Yeah. That's going to be great. Yeah. It is not fun to bike in. And the thing is, when, yeah. We also need to not push people to take that route until there's a bridge to come across into downtown. <laughs> yeah, that'd be another thing. I forgot about that. Well, part. they're not going to take it. I mean, ultimately, they will. Look at what they're doing now. I mean, they're doing it all the time, every day. So there are nine people from Concord, Mass, that came in a group down Main Street, you know, Tracy took pictures. Well, of for now, they can just yeah. be a vehicle. No, the other day, there was, there was the four or five bikes at... Uh, at the end eating, and then there was four or five bikes at the uh, diner. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. is, yeah, people are actually people. coming here and doing their business. There's a lot yeah. of people. I saw the other thing is, is there's right. constant parking down to the trailhead down by the river now, mm -hmm. um, which I know people are, it uh, never oh. used to be. They're using the one up here too. On the one on 16. Oh, really? yeah. um, right, every, this is not hard, right, but uh, Elmer Pond Road. Yeah. 
-hmm. There's cars oh, parked oh, yeah, right there. Access. They're not supposed to be there. They're no, parked right, they need right in the road. Fishing and putting the boat well, they're parking right in the road right there, right through the road. They're not even parking down to the fishing thing. So <laughs> there's definitely a huge, huge amount of interest in it right now. I, I hope it stays. And it's a good thing that we have, we do have places for people to park. And we, we, do. And we do just have this, you helped us get that um, on Creamery Road. There's quite a lot of parking yeah, there right very now. nice parking right over there. As soon as they actually uh, correct their maps and have our trailheads on them in the correct spots uh, that we've been working on for a year, yeah, it'll be even better. People will actually know where There's a lot going. of people working on it right now. I know that. I, the way I look at it is out of 100 people, it's like herding cats. Out of a hundred people, maybe ten of those people will use the will follow the directions. Yeah. Well, I just did a dump truck, and and ever at least twenty five percent, if not more, the people walk up that side of the sidewalk, see the big sign that says sidewalk close, see the yeah. crosswalk come across, see the dump truck with just a little bit of room between the fence, construction fence. And they still walk right up to the right up to right on that fence, right up to the skinny into the mirror, and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Well, I, all day on Main Street, people crisscross across the road and yeah. don't use the crosswalks constantly. I'm like, Boy. people who don't are not capable of walking fast as well. Right. Don't it's like you know these people. The, the, the guy had two bags, of, had bags, and I'm like. What made you think this I was going to be? Someone pulled out of the diner the wrong way. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. And there's a sign there. This is crazy town. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, wait. People stopping at the yellow light. Did we, did we all, we passed that motion, right? We did. Okay. So we I was just going to. Can I just add something really quickly? To super, that? Super quickly to that? Yeah. Um, can we put something in the kiosk? Oh, that's a good question. Can we put something in the kiosk directing people downtown? We can't downtown? put anything um, on the trail side of the thing because the LVRT has rules about what gets put in there. What? Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Can we just... What? Okay, so we can put one on the veterans park side. Possibly. That's crazy. But we also really? need to make changes to that kiosk so that it's actually... So you can reach it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But we're on it. I want to put the, um, I'm still looking for a key for it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I want to put the hinge on the top. Yeah. Just change the hinge. Why? Where the hinge is, is it? It's on the bottom. It's on the bottom. So oh. You so you have to be a giant to, be, yeah. to be able to get up there and lower the thing. How much should we spend on that? I don't we got a grant for okay. it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much. Uh, that was a grant that Sean and Jeff <laughs> did for us. Yeah. Sean who? Okay. All right. Moving on to select board reports. Oh, okay. Really quick. The um, yeah. the equity committee has been doing bi-monthly listen and share sessions. The last one we did was with the Harbor Health Center about um, health and equity. And there were about six people who attended, but it was a really great conversation. So we're going to have, uh, we'll probably have another one in August or September after the height of the summer. But they've been really great. Um, that's my report. Great. Um, I will say that uh, Yellow Barn, um, uh, what do you call it? The It's not hazard mitigation, it's the yeah. CAP, corrective action plan for um, soils. Um, the testing happened last week. Friday, Thursday, Friday, Friday. and um, results came back and there are some areas with some just barely over the limit levels of some things. So arsenic. there's hmm? arsenic. Yeah, arsenic, which is actually pretty common in Vermont soils. Anyway, so there's a there's an area that's going to be deline delineated for some soils that need to be handled specially and there's a plan that's being developed and unfortunately there's apparently we've somehow triggered a public comment period on the plan you did that no somebody did that though i don't know how that happened i was anyway so that's happening and uh the library is digging over here but there was a lot of water in the soil so but sure movement there yeah and they're figuring out how to proceed. Yep, so Can we get an sure. update from the library at some point? 
it doesn't have to be the next meeting, but it'd be nice to like, hear about the project from them. Yeah, I don't know if Diane that'd be great. Somebody, somebody could, yeah, and that'll be July, end of July. Um, I did ask uh, Diane oh. to do an update soon. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, oh, I was just, the uh, LVR, the, the, there's some LVRT um, thing tomorrow. Publicity with right. there's going to be some no, reporters. Going to be some reporters up at the at the depot tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Yeah, right. and I'm supposed to go talk about Arctic trails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm not there, you'll text me. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I'll come or, back. Or, <laughs> or not. Or do it for you. Right. That'd be even better. <laughs> All right. No, Any good. other select board reports? New business or old business? Hearing none, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. And we are incredibly on schedule. Yeah. That's right. Thank you, thank you, thank you.